everybody. my God. Welcome to C3 Church Global Conference. Conference. It is so good to see you wherever you're watching from you believe right it? now. We're live. We are live streaming bright and early Session from Sydney, one. Australia to the world. Yes. Oh my gosh. And so if you're in Australia Pacific. Yes. Welcome to you. Good morning. Yes, good morning. If you're in UK, Canada, America, Europe, good afternoon. welcome to you. Good yes. evening, good evening. Wherever you are. Oh, if, I mean, what better thing to do before you go to bed, right? Yeah. Brush your teeth, have a little cocoa in bed, watch the <laughs> global conference. Amazing, yes. right? Yes. Then go to bed. I love it. I love it. This is so cool for us to all be yeah. gathered together yeah, yeah, online yeah. as a global family. Oh, we're I'm so excited for over this day. 600 churches around the world. Crazy. I love being a part of this family. Yes. And we better introduce ourselves. My name is Tyler Ancliffe. This is my amazing wife, Emily Ancliffe. Hello. We call this place home. We have our whole lives and we just love it here. Yes. And we're excited. Session one. Session one. Kicking off strong. Ooh, I love that we have worship. Goals all already. Our yes. Churches. Yes, we got Citri so NYC. Voices. Yes. Come oh my on. gosh. Yes. It's going to be so good. We got, uh, Worship from SYD, we've got worship from uh, Canada, we've got worship from all over the world, and I love the flavors of worship. Yes. Oh, that's what's exciting to me. And but, hey, if you're joining yes. us on Zoom, yes. turn your cameras on. We want turn to see your beautiful your faces. Beautiful, beautiful we've faces. got some games throughout the day. Oh, yeah. Yes. We've got a few tricks up our yes. sleeve, actually. So make so, sure you join in for pre show every session. Every session. We have five sessions today. We're going for 12 hours. Pray for us. Please this is pray a for the team here. Yes. <laughs> We're going to be having fun. And so right now, should we play a game? I'm ready for a game. Let's play a game. And right now, if you're in the chat, if you're in the YouTube chat and you're on a Zoom chat, I want to know about it. Let us, let me hear you. I'm in the YouTube chat right now. I'm saying, oh, Christina Bradford, oh, Laura Barton, Wendy Sandra, give, give your church a shout out. <laughs> give where you're from a shout out. Yes. But, okay, so. First game. Amazing pastors. Yes, we love our yes, pastors. Yes, yes, yes. All around the globe. Yes. And you know what they say? What? Leaders aren't born. They're not born. They're made. They're made. But they are born. But they are born. They are born. Here's the thing. We're all born. I know. It's it's shocking. We're all born. So, I mean, it raises the question, what were they like when they were born? Yeah, what Ooh. were these pastors like yeah. when they were infants? So, let's so play a game. Let's play a little game. Yeah, we got... Guess the baby photo. And it's going to be some speed rounds. Yeah. So, if you're in the chat right now, we want to see you in the chat guessing. Oh, I think that... Is that Pastor Phil? Is that Pastor Chris? <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sure they're a cute kid. Okay, let's get the first baby up on the screen right number now. number one, all right? Put yeah, let's... guesses in. Let's have a look. Oh, that is a oh! cute baby. Oh, my gosh. Oh, don't it's you just smiley. Cheeks. It's like... <laughs> Who is that? Is that the black and white that, photo? Is that giveaway the era? <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Writing right, the chats. Writing the, chat. the chats. Who do we think ooh, this cute who, little baby ooh. is? Who is it? Is it a pastor from one of our amazing European churches? I don't know. No, I don't know. All right. All right. Okay. Getting in the chat. Getting in the chat. The big reveal. Oh, we've got a guest pastor Simon. Ooh, ooh. Okay. okay. And reveal. 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 Here we go. Who is it? We have the amazing. Oh, it's Mark, Mark Kelsey. Kelsey. Pastor <laughs> Mark. I'm shocked. I had no idea. <laughs> That he was so cute. cute. <laughs> I just, I'm absolutely shocked. Let's do one more. Let's do Thank one more. You, Pastor Mark. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Another Put cheery little fella here. Up. Okay, in the chat right now, who is this? Who is cute this? Oh, we've got a Pastor Chris guest. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cute. okay. What? Wow, it very much could be. It, I, okay. Yeah, I can see some resistance. Okay, there. few more, few more. Three, cute. two, who is one. It? Put in the chat, put in the chat. It is. Oh, and it is. It, it is Pastor, Pastor Chris. <laughs> wow, still Cute rocking that bubba. smile today, generations yes, later. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, we can do some. A few okay, more okay, then. one more, one more. Are you guys getting warmed up? Oh, I mean, like we're, I mean, we're firing. so excited to be here. <laughs> Ooh, okay, right, last one, next last photo, one. Next photo. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh you know, I know okay. this one. I know this one. He heralds from oh, the okay. Australia Pacific area. Okay. Yes, this is true. There's a little clue for you there. Mm. Ooh, okay. Put oh, we got chat. some. We got some great guesses in the chat. Who do you think it is? Who do you think it is? Okay, this I is good. It's... Okay, okay. And okay. the reveal in three, I think I know. two, one. one. It's Steve Jesus. Burgess. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that? Uh, he's. <laughs> He was he was cuter as a kid, I have to say. He was cuter as a kid, yeah. <laughs> oh okay, so we are about to kick off our 
service this oh, morning, so but there's ready. one last thing we want to do. Yeah. Okay, so wherever you are, if you're in the Zoom chat or if you're in the YouTube chat, what you're going to do right now is you're going to, don't press enter just yet, Wait. not yet, but you're going to put where you're from, your C3 church, or if you're coming representing another church and your city, and then we're going to all press enter at the same time. Yeah, it's going to create like a waterfall yes. in the chat of it's where gonna, you're from. It's going to cascade start down. Start typing, don't press enter don't, yet. Don't, until don't do it say. yet, don't do it yet. Put and you're going to watch, it's going to be like, pew, pew, pew. we have over 200 people right now in the chat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. this is good. Okay, where are you from? Where are you from? Where's your city? Maybe give your your pastor location, a shout out. Type it in, yep. hold on. I'm from NYC, I'm from LA, I'm from California, one and the same. All right, are you ready to press Europe. enter? Okay, okay, you ready? On the count of three. Three, two, two one, go. Go, 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 go. Oh my gosh. All these locations, welcome. Wow. <gasps> Guys, we love you, so we love you, we love you. So many people. Calgary, oh welcome from Calgary, from Scotland, from Canada. Wow, from Texas. We oh, love our Texans. Works. This is so cool yes. to see where you're all from. So, we love you. We're about welcome to, start. to the C3 Church Club Conference. Ready, you're going to have an amazing time. Session one, let's go. Tongues of fire 
Conference, never done yeah. this before. A Waco sleeper. You guys look so amazing yeah. on all the screens, oh everybody who's joined in. Yes, it's so exciting, so exciting. And all our worship teams yeah. from across Wasn't the world. Wasn't that amazing? That was just incredible. Wake up a sleeper love from that all song. around the world. Love that song. So if there's ever much. a time that we've got to wake up, it's it's exactly. like today. Exactly, it's now, it's now. Exactly. And this is such an exciting day. It is. Like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. across the globe. We're going to be praying. We're Five regions be... right now. Yes, so Canada, awesome. Canada, Australia. Pacific. It's beautiful America, people. America, Canada. Places. Yeah, it's pretty it's, close. <laughs> this is a oh, legendary moment, people. Yes, it is. Celebrating our 40th year. Yes. And absolutely being able to get everybody together. Oh, we are so excited. And we can yes. see you clapping on the Zoom <laughs> there and saying, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. Oh, we love you. So gorgeous. Yeah. Welcome, thanks. welcome. Thank you for coming on board. This is the purpose of Zoom. Yeah, totally. Zoom, Zoom. It's not to drive a car to the supermarket, but right. it's to see each other on the screen. Cultural meetings, <laughs> commercial meetings. God oh. brought a Zoom so we could yes. reach each other all around the world. Yes. Oh, how you know, marvelous. As we, as we start the day, Chris, yeah. Uh, yeah. the sense I have inside of me is traction that yes. we are going to get grip for a higher level of progress than we've yes. ever had before. And I believe Amen. that that is going to happen here yes. today in every one of the sessions that yes. the spirit of momentum, the spirit of acceleration and the spirit of traction yes. moving us forward is going to get a hold of us. There was a rushing mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. That's right. And that created such a momentum. We still feel it here today. <laughs> and I believe that you yeah, and I... Do. Yes. gathered from all around the world, just like the day of Pentecost, when there were people gathered from all around the world. Momentous things happened. But yes. one of the greatest things is that suddenly people who were stuck, people who yes. weren't doing anything, 
became alive with a sense of moving forward and they went all around the world. Yes. We are all around the world today, but all around our nations, all around our communities, all around our cities. Yes. The Spirit of God is going to move through C3 Church. Yes. And through every other church without any shadow of a doubt. But you and I have been called to this tribe. And so we are believing together and anticipating an enormous, momentous move forward yes. by the power of God. As we come into this 40 year celebration, we're anticipating that the next 10 years are going to be unprecedented yes. in whatever has happened before here, Chris. Yes, I know. How exciting. We it gonna, is exciting. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Are we going to do that now? Is it right and we're now? We're going to invite people from around yes. the world in, the, in all of these oh. prayer times as we open up today. Yes. We're going to have Chris and Gosha Denham yes, from well. Leeds yes. in the UK yeah. to lead us in prayer. Yeah. And so uh, go ahead, Chris and Gosha. Hey, I'll be. Hey, guys. So good to see you. Oh my so goodness. Good to be here. This is amazing. So good to be here. This is amazing. You look bigger than I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're sitting. It's like everybody wants to get everybody wants to It's sitting forward. I, uh, this, this prayer is going to be so powerful. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Go ahead, guys. Here we go. Guys. Oh, I want to well, we're here. Oh, we're here. 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 We're uh, all across the world right now, and so wherever you are, whatever you're doing, to lift up the name of Jesus. And uh, we, every stronghold will be broken, uh, every sickness uh, uh, taken, uh, the blood of Christ is over that, and we start believing across these next few hours in the name of Jesus is resound like never before. All across the world, all across the world, we lift Him up. Let the, there is no other name that is higher than the name of right. Jesus. Right. Father God, we just want to thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. It's going to happen um, in this time in all the nations that you represent. Father God, we thank you that your church is rising. We thank you that you are building your church. We pray for the spirit of the spirit to go and the spirit of faith to come on people. We pray, Amen. Father God, for healing to come. We thank you, Father God, that none of the children will go without anything as a result of COVID, but Father God, that your children will prosper, that your churches will prosper, that your churches will grow, that your churches Amen. will expand in the season. In the mighty name of Jesus, we yes. thank you, God. Thank Amen. you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you that you are willing thank and you, able Lord. to heal. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, God. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm telling you, the most powerful place to be right yeah. now right. is on our knees. And uh, we know that there are some pretty momentous events going on, especially in the USA right now. Yep. And we are praying so for God's will and His yes. kingdom to be established in that great nation exactly. because it will affect us all around the world. Yes. But I want you to know that here today, Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. And He has got obviously all of our total support, vote and yes. uh, Thank you. our worship. And that's what we're going to do here today is focus on Jesus Christ, the Lord of the church, the King of glory, uh -huh. the God of the whole universe, Chris. I reckon. I totally agree. I, hey, we're in agreement with that. And we are praying across the globe with all our C3 pastors. And right now we're going to invite... Josiah uh, and Kim yeah, Olson. Yes, to come and lead us in all prayer. All the way from Canada. Yes, the great Canadians. The great Canadians. Hey, guys. Woo! Hi. Hey. Hi. Good to see you again. Yeah, we did the masterclass last year. Oh, oh of course we do. Oh my gosh, You're unforgettable. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, why don't we pray? Go ahead. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be gathered together in, uh, mm. in this way. God, such an incredible moment to gather as a global conference here. God, I pray right now specifically for every pastor that is in the room, in the Zoom room, or tuning in right now. God, I just pray for the spirit of rest. God, your word says, come to me and I will give you rest. And I pray that as this has been a time that maybe has been weary for many over this last season, God, we pray right now that this will be a time of refreshing and a time of rest to come in. Even just in these next 12 hours that you would restore into people the vision that you have in them, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Father God, I thank Amen. you that now more than ever you will be revealing yourself as the most unlimited God. That the breath of God, the breath of you, Holy Spirit, will be going so much further than a conference venue this year. That you will be going into office buildings and bedrooms and living rooms and church buildings and, and wherever you are, God, that truly your breath will be filling this planet, God. And right now, at these beginning stages, as I see like a, a match being lit, the spark going off God we just open ourselves up to whatever it is yes. you want to do to the shifts you want to make to the things you want to start and God we are so excited yes, we are expected I am expecting to be surprised by you today mm -hmm. and we just thank you so much for what you will be accomplishing on the earth in thank this you, hour Lord. in Jesus name amen amen wow amen. powerful That's, that is a powerful prayer oh, I, look prayer if United Prayer across the globe with so many thousands of our pastors and leaders is going to have a massive effect on the totally. future. And this is it. 40 years, we're turning the page and we're going into a magnificent future. We certainly are, people. Yes. And, I'm uh, believing, God, that this today is a launching pad, yes. a catalyst and a galvanizer of the C3 movement so that we'll move towards one million souls worshiping in church every yes. weekend all around the world. And I believe that that will just be the beginning of a whole new legacy. Today, the anointing is coming upon you. It's coming upon your church. Yes. It's coming upon your people. The yes. anointing of God is coming on your worship leaders, yes. on your connect group leaders. The anointing of God is coming upon your board members. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon yes. every single pastor in our movement today at a new level. Level, yes. A fresh anointing, not an old one. The old will be discarded and new will come. New yes. voices will rise. Yes. New songs will be born. Yes. New messages will be brought. New books yes. will be written. New leaders will rise. We are seeing a whole new day of new voices under a fresh oil and a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, release that upon all of our people right around the world today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shout it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. And hey, we're going to an amazing song of worship uh, from C3 London. So good to see you all, our beautiful team there. Uh, and so take us into that place of the presence of God right now. We love you. We love you. We love you. We send all our love from Sydney today. God bless you. Amen. Hey C3 Global family, so good to have you with us from wherever you're watching. We're gonna worship together. Let's sing this. Your mercy never fails. Though the wind and seas may change. When I don't know what comes next oh, Where my feet will tread I know you'll be just where I live Cause I'm sure Father I know that you are good I know
Welcome everybody. Hello, hello. My name is Alex and welcome again to session one. Now, big shout out. What I want you to do if you're on Zoom, I want you to wave in just a second. If you're on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, put it in the chat, but we want to welcome you. So if you are from Australia, can you wave on Zoom? Come and give us a wave on the pastors. If you're on the YouTube, put it in the chat. If you're from Australia, tell us where you're from, what state, what suburb, wherever you're from, what city. And shout out to everybody from our Pacific region. Come on on Zoom, wave on YouTube. Hello, hello. Welcome everybody from our Americas region. We love you. Come on, give us a wave on Zoom. Put it in the chat on YouTube. And Canada, come on, shout out to all the Canadians. We love you. Give us a wave. Yeah, come on on Zoom. Don't, don't just spectate. Come on. Very good, very good. In the, in the chat on YouTube, say hi. And also to everyone from Europe. Welcome. Give us a wave on Zoom. Europeans, it's late evening. God bless you. Well done. And uh, hey, we're going to have such a great time together in session one. And look, if you're watching on Zoom, it's very important that you're not naughty, okay? So we want to see your face. So turn your video on, put it on mute. We, we don't want to hear you, God bless you. But we do want to see you. We do want to see you. And we don't want you like off cooking. We want you to be with us, be in the room, because we're going to have such a great time today together. And so right now, I hope you're ready. Are you ready? Come on, that's better. You look ready now. Are you ready? Because we're going to have our first speaker. And I want you to get out your notepad, get out your digital device, your iPhone. If you've got a Samsung, we'll pray for you. But whatever you've got, get ready. And we're going to lean in because it is my great privilege and honor to introduce our global, our C3 Church global leader. And can you please put your hands together on YouTube, put a fire emoji in the chat. Can you please welcome Pastor Phil Pringle? Come on, give it up. Over to you, boss. Well, there we are, people. How good it is to be here today. I've seen all your beautiful faces on these screens, and I'm thinking, you know, my Lord, there's so many magnificent people all around the world who are leading the charge. I get impressed even when I'm in our own church here in Sydney, in C3 SYD. As we go around, I'm sorry, I forgot a microphone. <laughs> there you go. It's always good to have a microphone. God bless you. We're new at this. This is our first step into the water. Amen. A little sinking, but we got saved. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it is so good to be here and to see all your magnificent faces to see all your beautiful people all around the world. Even here in Sydney sometimes, when I look at our own church, just I am surprised and so excited all the time at the number of extremely fine men and women, both old, young, middle-aged. God has blessed us with a tribe of people who have just the most ex excellent spirit. And to hang out and fellowship with one another in these day days is taking us into an even higher level. I think that when we started, there was Pastor Simon McIntyre and Helen and Chris and I. I think of who we were then and what has become of that over the years. And I am anticipating that in these next like 40 years, as we move on from this 40 year period, we will see such, not just an expansion of numbers, but a lifting and, a, and an elevating of the Spirit and the re release of the power of God. I am anticipating that the greatest miracles that you and I have ever seen are going to start happening throughout the earth. And I thank God that you and I are people of the Holy Spirit. We are people who elevate Jesus. We are people who do not believe that the age of miracles is over. The age of miracles is still very much alive and able to reach into people's hearts. We're not just going to subscribe to an age of unbelief, opting for chemicals as our answers, opting for just words and other things that the world is trying to offer to bring solutions in people's lives. But I believe that you and I have been called by God to carry His presence to this generation.
Now, when they watched around those walls at Jericho, they carried the presence of God right in the middle. And the, the men of the army went out in front of them. And as they marched, that presence that they carried eventually brought those walls down. Those walls, doesn't matter what walls are in your city, doesn't matter what walls are in your church, doesn't matter what walls are in your own life. Today, as we march with the presence of God, that is going to come dismantling and crumbling down by the name of Jesus. This message that I'm sharing today is do it now. It's under the major th title of thrive. And uh, I love that word. It's deep in my soul right now, the idea of flourishing, of thriving. And as we start to get a hold of what God wants for you and me, we will find ourselves flourishing at levels we never thought possible. The idea of do it now is in the sense of, I'm worried that people are treading water during this COVID time, waiting until it's over, waiting for better situations, waiting for a better moment in life before they actually do things. But I love the words of four lepers in the Old Testament who basically said, let's do it now. Let's not wait for the future. Let's not put off that building that we were going to build. Let's not put off that business that we were going to start. Let's not be sitting around waiting for perfect conditions until we get people saved, until we reach out to people who have lost their way and have slipped out of church. Let's do that right now with the tools we have, with the Spirit of God on us, we will be effective. And I'd like to think that we, rather than be affected by the circumstances, that we take advantage of the moment, take advantage of the opportunity. In 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 1 to 9, that's the story of these four lepers. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. I gotta stop there. I mean, this is a bold thing for this man to say. He's gonna tell them, that tomorrow there's going to be abundance of food. Now you've got to understand there'd been months and months and months of a siege against the city of Samaria. There, were, there was no food coming into the city. In fact, it was so terrible, and I hate to say this, but they, they, they were eating the children. That It was cannibalism had started happening because they were so starving in the city. And as they got to this completely desperate place. The prophet comes in when they're, they're selling doves dung for $50 and an ass's head for like $100. That's how scarce the food was. And the prophet says, tomorrow, there's gonna to be a huge amount of food everywhere you look, there's gonna be food. In fact, you'll be able to pick up a whole bag of grain for a dollar. You'll be able to pick up bags of wheat for just a couple dollars. Now, when he said that, he, he, it's got, you got to understand, this is a bold statement under these circumstances. I believe that for you and me, boldness is absolutely at a premium right now in these days. It is not a day to be intimidated or to be bullied by the enemy. It is not a day to be withdrawing and retreating from activity. It's not a day to say, let's stay safe. Let's move backwards from reaching out and stepping out. Boldness is the key for any release of the Holy Spirit. God has not, is not going to move on timid people. When David met that Goliath giant, three sources tried to intimidate him. His own brothers around him said, what are you doing? Go back to your little flock and go back to your sheep. You're just out here because you, you're rascal, you wanna see the battle. But David didn't let the bullies push him back. He went to the king and he said, I can take the giant. His own king tried to intimidate him, said, who are you, you're a, you're a kid. You're too young for the job. You, you, this guy's been a, a, a warrior since his youth. You're only just a young person. How could you take him? But there was such a conviction and boldness in David's speech and in his eye that he convinced the king of Israel to put the future of Israel in the hands of this young boy. He was unintimidated, people. 
He was bold. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and I, boldness is inevitable. It is the boldness of God that fills our spirit that brings those walls down. God said to Joshua, be bold, be strong. And so when, when, when we see this boldness coming into the heart of David and he's running towards the giant, not tiptoeing, he runs to the giant. The giant starts intimidating him. You will find that the devil with evil spirits will try to discourage you, depress you, intimidate you with fearful thinking, bring you down on the inside of your heart, make you negative on the inside about your church, about your ministry, about your future, about whatever God has got for you. He will try and rob you from your reward by getting you into a place of small thinking. In fact, Paul says in Colossians 2 verse 18, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility. That word humility is a very long Greek word that I won't even try to say, but it means to reign in the thoughts, to reign in the emotions and make them small. So that means that the devil is trying to get you into small thinking, into immobilized action, into small heart emotions, whereas God by His Spirit will make you bold. He will make you large. He will enlarge your thinking and enlarge your heart. However, I believe He needs you and I to cooperate with Him to actually make that happen. And so whatever thoughts are in your mind that are trying to make you think smaller than what you know the destiny in your heart is all about, resist those thoughts, rewire your thinking because you will transform your circumstances. You will transform yourself. You will transform your world when you renew your mind, when you rewire your thinking. Paul says that in Romans 12 too, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that word transformed is the same word they used when Jesus was transfigured before them. It's the same word about metamorpho when we transform, when you see a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. It is a complete and utter transformation so that the former state is unrecognizable. And when we renew our mind and say, I'm going to do this, and we let our thoughts on the inside be bold thoughts, big thoughts. When you're seeing pictures ahead of you that are negative, change them. You know, a few years ago, I uh, actually had a little accident on my motorbike and I came off and uh, put a big hole in my knee, was in hospital for a week and a half or so. And, uh, and when I came out, I wasn't going to stay off the motorbike. I, I just started riding again. But every time I got on, a thought would come to my mind of crashing. I could see myself coming off. When you have a negative trauma in your life, it creates a subconscious way of thinking, a fear, a, an intimidation, a, an expectation that's negative. So I thought I've got to, I got to blank out that thought. I got to cauterize that, that way of thinking and see myself walking through the door at home, happy and healthy. And so I started to work on that. And for years now, I've had no recollection of, of that crash. I, I don't even think about coming off the motorbike. And, and you and I can go to work on our thinking and create a bold frame of thinking, a bold spirit on the inside of us. And that's exactly what Paul was saying. Don't let anybody cheat you out of your reward through false humility, through thinking that to be a small person, that to be a restrained person, that to have small emotions, to have small thinking is more Christian than to have big dreams and to have high aspirations and to have an ambition and on the inside of you that is a God ambition to see His kingdom enormously enlarged, increased and expanded. That is what is going to happen to you. Listen to me. You may think, that's not me. I, I'm, I'm not that extraordinary. I'm not that big. You're looking at a very ordinary person. You're looking at people all around us who were ordinary at one stage in their own life, but started to believe that they could be more than what they had been before. They started to believe in what God saw in them. 
God did not put you on this earth to be a failure or to be somebody who was just going to be a, a fading out uh, Im image in their mind and somebody who's going to be intimidated and bullied all their life. In the name of Jesus, I am saying to you today, stand up and awaken on the inside. Do not let the devil put you down. If he's reminding you of your sins, remind him of his defeat. If he's trying to bring back memories of bad things, tell him about the lake of fire that's coming up for him. In the name of Jesus, stand up on the inside and put a fight in your spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. Do not sit down and say, oh, I guess that's the way it is. I've got to sort of get, have a bit of a, a, a new thinking about myself uh, and, and try and be a bit more sincere and, and try and actually be a bit more Christian. Whatever that concept of Christianity is that is defeating you, you got to overwhelm that. Demons get in the church, Paul says, and they will try and teach doctrines that forbid the eating of things and forbid marriage and forbid this and forbid that and restrain this and stop that. That's what the devil wants to do to contain you. Today, you're going to bust out of that cage, people. You're going to break every chain that has been put around you in the name of Jesus. As you say, no longer am I going to be held captive to small thinking, to small heart, to a small emotion. Now, when the prophet Elijah, uh, the prophet Elisha says to this king, he says, tomorrow the food is going to be abundant. There's going to be a huge amount of food. He was actually upheld by his chief officer standing by his side. And the chief officer mocked the prophet. He said, oh, if God in heaven could open windows, as if that could ever happen here today. The prophet then gave another prophecy. He said, okay, here's my second prophecy. You will see it, but you won't eat of it. And that's what unbelief does to us. It keeps us out of what God is about to do. Very quickly, God was about to reverse a situation that had been holding that entire city captive for years. And here in a moment of time, God was going to do it within 24 hours. He's going to change things. And you might have difficulty believing that anything could happen in the next 24 hours that could change your world, that could change your church. But God is wanting us to rise up on the inside and start believing and seeing that God can do greater things than we've ever seen before. Right here, right now in this place, I want you to start saying, my God, you can expand our church. Your experience might be like how I fell off my motorbike. You might have lost a few people out of the church. You might have not seen growth at any level. You might have lost some money. You might have been defeated by councils and whatever in terms of building programs. The bank might have turned you down. Some people that you prayed for in your church might have died. There's all these things that happen all the time. In fact, more negative things are going to happen to us than positive most of our life. You're going to find yourself falling down, stumbling on a mistake you made again and again and again. But you just got to get up one more time than you fall down and you'll be a conqueror. The fact is, you've just got to keep on coming back and fight the fight. Don't give up the fight. Say, I'm going to rise up right now. I'm going to stir my spirit against that giant that's trying to defeat me, against other people who are trying to intimidate me and tell me it can't be done. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to take the word of the Lord. And I'm going to believe what the prophet has said, that by this time tomorrow, you will see an abundance of food. And God always provides abundance. My Lord, I've, you know, I, I don't know that, that God has any other way of doing it. When He provided those fish for Peter, it wasn't just two fish in a net. And it wouldn't be such a great miracle, but it was a, it was a boat sinking, net breaking catch. When he provided fish and, 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 and bread for the multitude, there were buckets left over. David said, my cup overflows. You see how opposite to the way the devil wants religion to be? 
the, the reality is God is abundant. The devil would love you to believe that God is miserly, that he is stingy, that he wants to withhold, that he wants to hold back. But we are living in an hour when tomorrow an abundance is coming into the church. I don't care what people have said. I've read statistics that say in the United States alone, there could be up to 60,000 churches closing. I refuse to believe that. I believe that we will see 60,000 churches opening in Jesus' name. We don't have to believe the statistics and the surveys. The polls certainly not. My friend, my belief is in the Word of God. Whose report are you going to believe? That's what we've got to say. My mind is going to be shaped by the things I believe. My subconscious is going to be shaped. My automatic living is going to be shaped by the things that I have believed on the inside of me. And I believe that the church is going to grow, people. I believe that C3 is going to expand all over the world with the best people in every city around the globe. In the name of Jesus, somebody's got to believe it. I want you to agree with me and believe with me that we will see revival come to the nations of the earth through you, not through some other people, through you right here today. You are that man of God. You are those people of God. You are that woman of God. You are that child of God. You are the one that God has chosen to take a hold of, to expand their thinking, to expand their dream, to expand their vision and to do what everybody else has said is impossible. I'm looking up here at Kerry Robertson and I thought, my God, this guy's just starting out in Frisco in Dallas. In the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit is with you, Kerry. Evangelism is going to come on you with a fresh oil. You're going to find so many people come to Christ and so many backsliders come back to the Lord. As you go in there with the Spirit of God on you and the Holy Ghost guiding you, you will reach literally thousands of Texans in the name of Jesus. Revival is coming your way. Lubo, there in, uh, in Amen. That's Kerry. Yeah, God bless you. Lubo is just buying a building. And uh, I believe that God is going to touch you, sir, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that building that you are buying is going to be overflowing with new people. In the name of Jesus, let the blessing of heaven fall upon Lubo and his wife and all of them in their congregation. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit breathes fresh life into this man's Sir, I see you giving birth, not just to churches, but to leaders. Many great leaders are going to come out of your church, Lubo. I see evangelists and pastors. I see teachers and even apostles are going to come forth from your spiritual loins. By the power of God, you've been faithful to God, and you will reap a reward in this hour by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I believe that Lorne and Kelly Tebbett, over there in Canada, and I see you in different screens there, guys, and the power of the Holy Spirit is about to hit Canada, and you are going to be carrying the presence of God into a whole new dimension in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, let the blessing of God come on all of our regional leaders. I believe, God, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to fall on you at a higher level than you've experienced before. Lord, you're going to be a teacher of the Word with miracles. As you teach the Word of God, the, the Spirit of God is going to accompany you. And as I come to a close here, people, I want you to know that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see this expansion that I'm speaking of. If we will refuse to be small in our thinking, if we will do it now, step up and do the thing that God has called us to now, not putting things off, but saying, let's get decisive, let's get motivated, let's get inspired to do what God has called us to do. At least do something. Those four lepers said, why sit we here till we die? Why do we let complacency and lethargy make us sit down until we have death in our bones? As they began their little walk across that no man's land, God amplified every step they took and made it sound like an army until the enemy was completely defeated. The next day, food was being sold exactly as the prophet had said. There was an abundance. Here's the thing. As you take your step, even though it may seem like a little step towards buying the building, 
towards expanding the church to starting a new service, to starting a youth service, a children's service. Take your little step. God will amplify it. All He needs is some movement, some movement in the camp. The four most unlikely people in the world defeated an entire army. The most unlikely people in the world are going to transform this world. That's you and me in Jesus' mighty name because we're bold enough to take a step. Heavenly Father, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon every one of our pastors in every one of our regions. And Lord, let their congregations rise up in this hour in bold faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Back to Alex. Oh my gosh. Come on, everybody. Let's thank Pastor Phil. Come on, put your hands together on Zoom. In the chat, put a fire emoji, put a, a lightning bolt, clap your hands, put a prayer. I don't care. That was amazing. And uh, we, we were on fire. What time is it? I mean, we're just getting, we're just getting warmed up. But uh, so good and so amazing. We, we have a, some, a world story right now. And so we have a world story from uh, South Asia, and so we're going to throw right now to Richard Bodder, who's going to take us through this story. Thanks. Absolute privilege as the uh, regional director for C3 South Asia to introduce to you Pastor Sadir Sable and his wife Rachel. They are the incredible leaders of the church in Pune in Maharashtra in India. They have done an amazing job of working with people and helping them out during this COVID pandemic. And they're going to tell a little bit of their story. Hello friends, I am Sudhir Sable and my wife Rachel Sable. Both of us we pastor C3 Church Pune. Uh, we are pastoring this church from last 27 years. I thank God for this time of uh, pandemic. In India, in Pune we had the lockdown and God has used our church for many ways. One of the things that God uses for the feeding the hungry people as we have seen in the lockdown there was a lot of people lost their jobs and there was a challenge so a lot of uh, laborers could not feed themselves and so we decided to uh, cook food and provide 150 lunches for just for 10 rupees to the needy one and we just distributed that uh, to the people those who could not even pay for free and uh, we thank God that God used that way not only that but we could also give groceries to uh, different uh, families we could distribute groceries to 350 families in Pune city and in all of Maharashtra, uh, almost 450 families we could distribute the groceries. We thank God for that. And I just remember at the start of the lockdown, uh, an elderly woman from our church and uh, she was uh, sick and she was infected and she had to be admitted and uh, because uh, of her age and she had uh, other uh, several um, issues uh, health issues so she was uh, almost on a ventilator for two days uh, but uh, miraculously god healed the church was praying for her and uh, we saw this amazing uh, healing in our church and also during this time uh, many people are viewing our uh, online services and um, we have seen that many people are blessed and they call us and uh, they thank uh, so we just want to thank God for that and we also uh, we remember that uh, one we were able to minister to one couple who was experiencing occultic uh, manifestations so God enabled us to help this couple and minister to them so we just want to thank God for this time even in this time God is working and we just thank God for all his uh, doings friends this couple were not Christians but uh, God could minister to them. That auntie had come from a Muslim background and you know, when the, the family saw that God could bring a person from ventilator, she 
their whole family believed Jesus. We thank God for that. Friends, uh, not only that, but in Maharashtra right now, we are running an online Bible school and we have 88 students. We are discipling them. And we thank God for this time of parade that God is using as a church for His glory. Praise God. Hey, come on, let's, let's thank God for what's happening in South Asia. Amazing. And uh, it's, so, it's so good to see you all. If you're on Zoom, we're loving seeing your faces, your beautiful faces, especially the faces of Stephen, Dawn, Burgess, just so attractive, uh, amazing. And shout out to, to Kelly Tebbett, you gorgeous thing. Shout out to the Warrens, to the McIntyres. We can see you all. And uh, there you are, we can see you. And a uh, reminder, while we're on Zoom, we love to see your face. We don't want to hear you, so put it on mute. But reminder, we can see you. Okay, we can see you. So just, just be aware of that while we're watching, you know, make sure everything's good and, and it's a good presentation and you're not picking your nose or, you know, you know what to do. But we are, we are so excited to um, introduce this next section. So we have Global Voices. And what this is, we're going to be hearing today from uh, short preachers from pastors all in our movement, in our C3 family. Come on, how good is it to be in the C3 family? And we have so many incredible pastors, preachers. And so we're gonna be releasing some people right now. And so I want you to welcome, you know, bang on the table, do whatever you gotta do. Please welcome from C3 Atlanta, the weapon herself. Can you give it up for Sunny Kane right now? Hello, C3 Global. Man, I am so glad that we are right here in the middle of a conference, all together, all around the world in one place. I'm so honored to be here with you today. My name is Sunny Kane, and my husband Jeff and I are the senior pastors of C3 Church in Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. Man, how exciting is this? We're celebrating 40 years. Pastor Phil and Pastor Chris and your tremendous team, I celebrate with you. Congratulations. I honor you, I thank you, and I love you with all of my heart. We are all better people because of what you've done in the last 40 years, and it just keeps on getting better. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had massive problems with your iPhone? I think all of us have at some point or another. But you know, I've found that when I have a big problem, when it's lagging or when it's slow, I'm just hoping for a quick solution. So I'll do a quick reset and I'll turn it off and turn it back on. You know what I mean? And I'll do that two or three times. I'll make sure that it's updated with the latest software and all of my apps are up to date. Like, please just let this be a quick fix. But when that doesn't fix it, when my phone's not working the way that it's supposed to work, I'll call the help desk and hope that I don't get the dreaded words back that I have a feeling I'm going to get. Have you ever called that help desk and heard them say, it's time for a factory reset? No, you can't tell me that. I've got so much on this phone and I can't lose it. But this is the deal. I believe that God's telling us as a church right now that it's time for a factory reset. And I want to assure you that you're not going to lose everything that's in you. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get back to who God called you to be, get back to the way that you are supposed to work in the first place. You know, with this pandemic, things have just been crazy. And we've had to learn all sorts of new things as pastors and as leaders, just to support our pastors, we've had to learn new things. And pastors are usually operating in one gift and they're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out how to stream and, and what platform to stream on, what cameras are gonna be best online and what sound mixing boards are gonna make worship sound the best when it comes through the computer. We've been in a whole different zone. It's like we keep having to get new apps app after app after app, because this isn't how we normally operate. And I don't know about you, but I feel like I've got five pages of apps. I've got so many apps. But now as I'm trying to claw my way out of this pandemic, you know, the world's trying to get better. We're trying to get back into in-person services. A lot of us are. I know that a lot of you out there can't do that, but we're all trying to find normal again. We're trying to claw our way out. And as we do, 
I believe that we're finding that it's not like riding a bike. You know, everyone says you'll never free it. It's just like riding a bike. But I don't think it's like riding a bike. I think we're having to reform habits that are gone. You know, common belief is that it takes about 66 days to form a new habit. But it also takes 66 days to get rid of a habit, right? It works both ways. I don't know about you where you are, but here in Atlanta, we were out of in-person services and online for six months. Six months, that's way longer than 66 days. That's a lot of days operating in something that's not our normal, that's operating outside of what our normal giftings are. We've developed new habits and maybe forgotten those old habits, forgotten how we used to be, who we were before the pandemic. And I believe that God's calling us back to a factory reset. But I wanna encourage you by letting you know that we're not the only ones that this has happened to. You know, Paul tells Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy, he tells him to fan into flame, fan into flame that gifting. He says, do you remember? Do you remember when the anointing came on you? Do you remember when I laid hands on you and spiritual gifts were deposited on the inside of you? Well, just like Paul said that to Timothy, I wanna say that to you today. Do you remember? Do you remember the spiritual gifts that have been placed on the inside of you? Because while some of you may be operating in your spiritual gifts, maybe you're teaching or preaching, a lot of you that have some of the other spiritual gifts, maybe prophecy or, or maybe hospitality, there's so many gifts out there that you haven't been able to use. I want to remind you to fan the flame. Fan the flame, 2 Timothy 1, 6 says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid hands on you. You're still you. You are still you. Those giftings are still on the inside of you. And although they may feel a little dormant, it just takes a little bit of wind to bring those back up into a big fire again. You are anointed and I'm here to remind you of that today. Listen, you don't need to get a new phone. It's just time for a factory reset so that you can work the way that you were originally intended to work. You know, Paul goes on uh, to tell Timothy, he says in the next verse, he says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Power, love, and self-discipline. You know, you may feel a little powerless right now as you're clawing your way out. Well, if you're operating in someone else's gift, if you're operating outside of the spiritual gift that's been placed on the inside of you, I'm sure you feel powerless. You know, it says uh, in Zechariah, it says it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Well, if you're in someone else's lane, if you're in someone else's gift, you're using your power and your might, but it's when you operate in your own spiritual giftings that God has placed on the inside of you that you actually work in real power. That Romans 8, 11 power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. You, you preach it, you hear it, you say it, but I'm here to tell you that it is true for you as well. Power, then it says we also need to operate in love. If we don't wrap our gifting in love. We're just a noisy clanging symbol and the world's forgotten all about how to love. They've forgotten because they've been so alienated and we have to step out and be those examples. As we're using our giftings, we operate in love. And then he says, and we also operate in self-discipline. You know, it's our job to nurture that spiritual gift that's been placed on the inside of us to actually get into the wind of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it's time for a factory reset. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much, so much, Lord, for this reminder of who you've called us to be. And we pray that you would fan that flame, that you would remind us of the power that's on the inside of us, that you would help us to wrap that power in love, Lord, and that you would help us to be self-disciplined, to nurture those things that you've entrusted us with. Lord, we love you. We're ready for you to have your way. We're ready to affect our cities for you by operating in our spiritual gifts. We love you and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together for Sunny. Put your hands together. Come on. So good. I feel blessed by that. Thank you, Sunny. And we love Sunny and Jeff Kane. Put some love in the chat.
for these guys, C3 Atlanta, the mighty church of C3 Atlanta. And so right now, our next global voice, we're gonna throw to, so get ready. We're gonna release Mr. Mario Rodriguez from C3 Las Vegas. So welcome him. Hey C3, I'm so blessed and privileged to bring the word for you in the next seven minutes. My name is Mario Rodriguez and I have the honor and privilege of uh, pastoring along my wife Myra and my two daughters Nicole and Isabella, beautiful C3 Church Las Vegas. And we send you greetings and love all the way from Las Vegas. Well, I have a word for you and it's more a prophetic word today based on the life of Noah. Uh, if you can read with me Genesis chapter 7, uh, verse 1 and on, you will discover this incredible and amazing story that you probably have preached about it, but I have a word for you from God on, based on this. And uh, throughout these years, since I was a little kid and going to the kids' ministries, I learned that when Noah went into the ark, he took a pair of every species of animals. But later on, I discovered when I, you know, read my Bible and 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 study in, in a deeper way, I find out that it wasn't a pair of every single species, but in as a fact, there were seven pairs of some of the animals. And when I was reading through this and, and I was reading through the promises that God gave Noah and how he fulfilled all the promises, I took this as a prophetic sign that in the next seven minutes, and for many of you guys, in the next seven days, you will receive houses that you never built. You will receive buildings that you never paid. God is gonna open the windows of heaven just like he opened the windows for Noah when it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It will rain upon our lives on blessings, miracles, and wonders. And I took this number, the seven, the perfect number, because God, it's about to change our season. Yes, I understand we're in the middle of a pandemic. And for us in America, we're in the middle of elections and, and new president and, and all this social distancing and every single item that you can think of. But I know God, his name is above every name and that he's not reacting to anything. He has been in the future and he knows and he has the best plans for you and I. And I'm declaring that the next seven days, the next seven weeks are going to be incredible and amazing to you and your ministry. I'm declaring that God is gonna heal the body, God is gonna prosper your family, and he's gonna restore every family that he has been, uh, that the devil has been touching in your church. And I know, I know as a fact that you will rejoice and you will re uh, enjoy the, the peace that takes every understanding I know the season, it's about to change. And when the rain came, Noah and his family were already in the ark. And guess what? Since you're part of the ark of C3, we are protected and God is with us. And we are going to see his promises being fulfilled in our lives. I, Many of you guys have as, as you see the results and as you see the testimonies of other churches getting new buildings and getting these new um, incredible blessings, when is going to be my time? And I'm telling you, God told me, it's your time. You are next. Please take faith, race, and, and be ready because in the next seven days, you're going to receive a miracle uh, news and and. and doors that have been shut till today are going to be open for you and your ministry and you're going to receive a powerful call and you're going to receive a powerful uh, news on what you've been expecting from God and people are thinking that this pandemic it's the worst time and I'm telling you for us the people of God for the C3 tribe this is going to be an opportunity for us to shine his his light and be blessed tremendously in every way. I want to tell you, in the last few months, God has blessed me and Myra tremendously in every way. We open a new company in town, and not only our church is thriving, but God is blessing us every day. And I don't think God only wants to bless the Rodriguez and only Las Vegas. He wants to bless you, and He wants to prosper you, and He wants to heal you. So in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring that the next seven days are going to be 
the best days of your life and you will receive every promise that God has placed in your heart. Please, please take heart. Please pray hard. Please trust God. He's about to change our season and we're going to see the rain coming on our lives. We are about to see new miracles, growth in our church, every area maybe you have been doubting God on, on your sons and your kids and your children do not doubt God has a promise that if you will maintain your faith in God he will come to uh, fulfill every promise in your life and your children will be worshiping with you in Jesus name Heavenly Father I want to thank you for this opportunity for this honor that you give me through our senior pastors, Pastor Chris and Pastor Phil, to be able to share and to be able to bless our community, our tribe. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity. And now I ask you that the faith that you have placed in me and Myra, and even greater faith, to be placed in all of my friends and, and every pastor that is listening to this message. May your reign fall upon their lives and their ministries. Please fulfill every promise that you have given them. In Jesus' name we pray. Friends, we love you. We can't wait to see you in person. And always you're welcome to come to Las Vegas and enjoy a few days. We have some of the best hotels and some of the best people that are going to make you feel at home. So till then, God bless you. I love you. See you soon. Come on, everybody, give it up for Mario and Myra, C3 Las Vegas, seven days. Come on, the, the next seven days, watch out world. And uh, so exciting. We love you guys. Put some love in the chat. Why don't you put some love in the chat for Mario, Myra, and our beautiful C3 Las Vegas family. Hey, right now, our next global voice hails from Fiji. Who loves Fiji? I love Fiji. And Fiji is the best. And right now, it is so cool. We're going to be hearing from Ben Morrison from C3 Suva. So I want you to give a warm welcome. Come on, everyone, a warm welcome. Come on on YouTube. Oh, don't act like you're not in the room. Come on YouTube. And let's welcome Ben Morrison. Thank you. Hey, Mbula Vinaka from the beautiful Fiji Islands. I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining with us here in this moment. It is such an honor and a privilege to be able to share with you what God has placed on my heart, not just for Fiji, but I believe for us as leaders, as pastors, as believers, as children of God. I want to take us to a scripture, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. And this is a prophetic word God is giving through His servant to His people. And I believe this is our word for today. And God is saying, do not call to mind the former things. Pay no attention to the things of old. Behold, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and verse 19. You see, I believe that we are living in unique times, a unique season, one that the world has never seen before. I believe that for the church, those that are called out, God is doing a new thing, something that is far greater than which is happening around us. God in this season is birthing, unlocking, and releasing something to us that I believe will change the world forever. However, I also believe that this new move of God, this new thing that God is doing and is going to do, has been intricately woven into the fabric of our DNA, even from the foundations of the earth. Now, how do I know this, you may ask? Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 26, God says, let us make man in our image. Now, we've all read and we are all familiar with this scripture. However, if you know the history of the Bible, the Bible was translated into Greek, and then it was translated into Latin before it was translated into English. Now, how does this play a part in what I'm sharing? You see, hidden in the Latin translation of this verse is a Latin word, imago, which is the Latin translation for the word image. Now, what's so interesting about imago? 
You see, imago is not just a Latin word. It's a word that's used in biology today. And it is the adult stage of metamorphosis in the life cycle of a butterfly, also known as the imaginal stage. Now, it's interesting that this Latin word can give us a greater understanding of what it means to be made in the image of God. We know through this word, imago, image, that we have within us through the Holy Spirit of God that was breathed into us from the very foundations of the earth, we have within us not just the capacity to live, not just the capability to grow, but the potential to fly. You see, in Imago, we now understand that life is about discovering the new paths that God has made in us. He has made us to be beautiful, unique, and purposeful. Each and every day of our lives, we grow out of one stage and shift into the next. It is no wonder that God instructs us in Isaiah 43, 18 to not call to mind the former things because no butterfly wishes they were still a caterpillar. We also understand through Imago that life occurs in seasons and that seasons change. You see, there is a season where it seems that we are just getting by, where we are wriggling our way through the rocky terrains of life, just like a caterpillar. However, that is part of our growth and that season will change. There is a season of growth that causes us to be isolated from the world or to be cocooned to a certain extent. In this season, what we retreat into determines how we come out on the other side. Now, COVID-19 was the season of isolation for all of us and continues to be that season for many. However, we know that seasons do not remain the same and that season will also change. I believe that if we allow this season of isolation to take us deeper into the heart of God, deeper into His Word, deeper into prayer, deeper into spirit-led and spirit-filled worship, deeper into prayer, just as a caterpillar sheds its former shell and breaks out of its limited vision, there will be a season for the church. And I believe that that season is now where we will break out of our slumber, break out of our comfort zones, out of what was and how it used to be and how we used to worship and how we used to do things and begin to recognize the strength and the beauty of that which has been developed in those times of waiting, that which has been developed in those times of seeking. We will begin to recognize and realize that within each and every one of us are wings that God has so beautifully created, gifts, talents, ideas, imagination and he has given them to us so that we can catch the winds of his spirit and soar into new territories and rise above the circumstances around us rise above the unstable economy rise above the ever-shifting landscape of politics and government rise above what is not and what is lacking and what is insufficient that we will begin to rise above through that which God is developing in us and take dominion and establish the unshakable kingdom of God. You see, God is doing something new, my friends, in this season. But He's not doing it around you. It is not happening outside of you. It is happening within you. That new thing is being released within you right now. Isaiah 43, 19, now remind us again, Behold, I am doing something new. Even now, it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. You see, in the wilderness of uncertainty and in the desert of our doubt, God is making a way and birthing new life in all of us. It's time to spread your wings and fly. God bless you all. More manda. Come on, everybody. Hey, come on, everybody. Let's thank Ben Morrison from Fiji. Amazing. C3 Suva, we love you guys. And uh, so encouraging. Who feels encouraged? You feel encouraged? Come on, wave at me on Zoom. You're doing all well. Hey, what a, what a session it's been. Uh, we are now coming into the last part of this first session. Can't believe it. It's already, already the end of the first session. Um, but we are going to go into two things. So listen carefully, everybody. Listen carefully. Lean in. Are you, are you listening? 
Okay, good. So what's going to happen now is we have a breakout session. So if you are on Zoom, you will have a link in your email. So you need to go to that link in just a moment, not yet. Uh, or that link is in the Zoom chat. And that link will take you to the new room on Zoom for our breakout session, which is Church Online. Lord help us. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to have a breakout on Church Online. Go to the link in the chat or in your email. If you are on YouTube, now on YouTube, we're taking you to a masterclass. And let me tell you, it is a masterclass because we're talking about church planting with the amazing Josh and Georgie Kelsey, Sam and Jess Picken, and Wayne and Mary Simpson. And so that is going to be an amazing masterclass. So have you got that? Breakout session, Church Online. If you're on Zoom, link in the chat, link in your email. If you're on YouTube, stay where you are. We're going to take you to a masterclass in just a moment. So session two will be after that. Before we go there, though, we're going to have one more song. And we want to say to all our wonderful Europeans, all the family in Europe, good night. We'll see you in the morning. Remember to wake up for session five, sleep well. Uh, but before we do any of that, we're going to have a song from the incredible people from C3 LA. Enjoy. We love you. We'll see you soon.
Hi everyone and welcome to the Masterclass Roundtable. Today we have a great table of leaders and we're going to be discussing church planting. So I'm going to kick off by um, passing over to you, Sam. Will you give yeah. us, just for context, Sam Picken, yeah. um, your church planting story in two minutes? Right. So we planted a church in Toronto and uh, it started with moving from Calgary with a team, small team of people, which I highly recommend mm -hmm. any church planter starting with a team. Uh, there was eight of us. We started with what we called preview services, which was a preview of things to come. So it's like an example of any visitor, this is what you're going to get. That was once a month, did four of those. Then we had our launch Sunday, believing for a hundred. Got 98. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's how it started. And then from there, that was five years ago. to where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Is that enough of the story? <laughs> that's pretty good. That was a good two minute overview. I'm impressed. Yeah. 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 What was your story again? You guys, when did you start? So, yeah, you can tell it. Yeah, so we moved from Sydney yep. to New York, uh, landed in late February 2013, and we wanted to have a team with mm -hmm. us, but no one from Australia got their visas and jobs or got approved. Oh, they no. definitely tried, uh, which, was, which was cool, really helpful. And, um, but yeah, they all tried. We landed there just on our own, and that's where we got the creative idea to start as a dinner party because we right. didn't have a team. But that ended up being such a God thing because mm. now dinner parties is really lifeblood of our church. So, so cool. But how, how about you guys in Hong Kong? Hong Kong. Well, we, without a lot of youth pastors in uh, WA in Perth, and mm. we weren't in the C3 movement, but we knew C3 was a church planning, I guess, organization. And uh, so we moved over to Sydney, mm. and we thought we'd be gone within a couple of years, but the, the green light seemed to go off, didn't it? Mm. It actually died. The whole desire to even wow. plant a church wow. just completely died. Wow. And we were on staff here at Oxford Falls. And then um, I remember actually it was we were going over to Presence Amsterdam at the time and we were in the plane. And at the same time we both felt this thing just drop inside us. Okay, now's the time. Wow. wow. And we, at the time we thought maybe it's somewhere in Europe because yeah. Wayne has a British citizenship. So we came back to Sydney and we told Pastor Phil, Pastor Mark and, and Simon and the first thing they said was, what? <laughs> what yeah. about? Why Hong Kong? But Hong Kong had always been in our hearts <laughs> since 2003. Wow. Wow. Mm. And we'd never been to the city. So the, the guy said, let's all pray about it for two or three months. And then we all came back together and they all said, yeah. Mm. Let, let's mm. And so the first this. time we came to Hong Kong, um, so we'd never been here before. Um, and we thought, where do we start? Where yeah, do we right. even begin? Because it's such a crazy busy city and um, yeah so it just sort of so how, how did you there. decide where to start where to start well really it was where where can we even hold a service because mm. the challenge in Hong Kong number one is venue mm. where do you even find a venue and right. the venue within your budget too yeah. Yeah. because property is ridiculously expensive we moved from Perth to Sydney thinking that was expensive but mm. Sydney to Hong Kong it's like let's just Tenfold. let's just yeah wow. times it by yeah. ten at least, yeah. So Sounds we moved like to Hong Kong. <laughs> we're, we're, there was just the three of us: Mary, myself, and our little ten-year-old son, Jake. Wow. Yeah. We had and another girl that actually yeah. uh, she came over just to get her visa in Hong Kong um, to go back to Sydney. She was um, in the city campus and uh, from Hong Kong, and she said to us, "Can you pray for me that I'm going to get my visa to go back to Australia?" And mm -hmm. we said, "No." Someone to stay with us. And, and the Lord answered our prayer. She, she didn't get the visa. Oh, yeah. And she's still with us today. That was oh, eight years ago. Oh, so that was awesome. So yeah. when we landed in Hong Kong, we gave ourselves six weeks to start a service. And uh, so we had an expression of interest website. Mm. We, we found a hold, hotel that we could start holding some services. And within six weeks, we had 91 people. Yeah. Wow. And then the Amazing. second week, it came back down to 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we began the hard then we, slog then we just of started to build from there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting what you said about um, just the seed dying because mm. ha that happened for us as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had the vision for New York, um, gosh, would it be four to five years before we actually left? Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, we thought we were ready to go. Mm. And so we approached our senior pastor and he didn't feel like we were ready. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> we weren't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, we, you know, the seed died, the dream died. Mm, yeah. And um, it really did. We really didn't think it would happen. 
um, and then um, I fell pregnant with our first child. Mm -hmm. And then um, Pastor Phil called us into his office and said, you can go now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> timing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, then, but then you said, no, I'm not I'm Then not I said, I, I'm not going. I'm just, I'm pregnant with my first child. This wasn't the plan. So Josh quickly went to pray. Mm -hmm. but I, <laughs> I just <laughs> prayed for God to move on your life. So. Yeah. <laughs> Changed my heart. Yeah. yeah. And then we were in agreement. But it's interesting that... Yeah. Yeah, every church planner I've met through the years always has a story of that, the vision or the dream dying. Mm -hmm. And obviously we understand that as a biblical principle mm -hmm. and that Jesus reveals that to us. Right. Yeah. Um, but maybe, uh, Jess, what would your opinion be or like your encouragement to people out there that are thinking about church planning and what do you do when you're going through that process of like dying to it, you know? Yeah, I mean, my story is probably a little bit different because I... I probably thought that I could kill the vision in him <laughs> when I married him. <laughs> um, I think God had other plans. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so I thought that I didn't, I didn't want a church plan. I'd grown up with my parents' church planning, and I was like, I don't want any part of this thing. This mm. is messy. This is horrible. This is mm -hmm. stressful as a family. Mm. And so when I met him and married him, I was like, it's fine. He loves me so much. I can change his mind. We don't have to do ministry. We're not going to be church planning. And God had other plans, and He God changed my heart instead. So I don't. That's. I didn't really have to let the vision die. I think I had to let my vision for my life mm. die, which wasn't wow. church planning, mm, so that God could put the church planning vision in me. It's great. Um, yeah, but it yeah. wasn't. A, it wasn't a fight of wills. No, like it wasn't. Says him. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well, he won. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but there was this moment that I that it was amazing where mm -hmm. you said this is going to sound like morbid, but you said like if anything ever happened to you, I would still want right. this. Right, that's and where I God had to get me to. I think that was after too. God God spoke to Jess, mm -hmm. and like I think he said that we can't keep going like this in our marriage. Yeah. If I wasn't on board, I couldn't just be the wife that supported his vision it had to be my vision as well. Mm. That's, yeah. that's what God was saying to yeah. me. Mm. And so, yeah, he got to me to a point where if anything was to happen to Sam, that it would st I would still carry the yeah. vision of mm. church planning to wow. the same level. Which I think is important yeah. for anybody, that, any yeah. couple, right. mm. yeah. um, is that each individual gets the vision for themselves. Yeah. 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 That's such an important point. Mm. How did you guys do it, being told that you weren't ready to go? Like, what? How do you? How did you navigate that? Yeah. It was really hard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what? I think we threw ourselves into what we've been given. Like, yeah. you have the initial mm -hmm. like, uh, and then you throw yourself into what's in your hand. Mm -hmm. So I was doing media and TV and marketing at. Oxford Falls and Joshua's young adults as a job and I was serving alongside him in volunteer capacity and yeah. um, I think we just really threw ourselves into what we were doing. Yeah, um, we realised there was n more things for us to learn Yeah, mm -hmm. and so in hindsight it's obviously 2020 vision, it's very clear mm -hmm. now that we, we right. needed to grow yeah. but I think you've got to make a decision at that point, no I'm going to maximise this season, yeah. I'm really going to learn as much as I can about leadership but also um, there's there's people in front of you right now that mm. just need your leadership. It's not about our mm. vision. It's really about the people that we're meant to serve yeah. right so then and there. And so I think right. God's really testing your your heart. Like, why do you want a church plant? Mm. You know, is it just a right. fad mm. or an idea? Mm. Or, and it, and church planting has become very popular. It's a bit mm -hmm. of a thing, you know. But I think that cannot be our motivation. So yeah. wherever it comes from, That's whether great. it's your own life vision or maybe you yeah. want a church plant too much. God's going to mm -hmm. test the vision mm -hmm. and the dreams to make sure that it's it's pure because it's about His people, right. mm -hmm. yeah. and we're just stewards of of the church. Mm -hmm. And so, it was and, amid, and then so it's that spiritual aspect, and then amidst that, it's the practical learning that you get. Like yeah. I learned mm -hmm. so much in those years that I've brought into our church. Oh right. my goodness! Yeah. So um, almost so many departments, so to speak, or mm -hmm. areas within a church that I would yeah. have no idea about. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh my goodness, so God knew exactly what he was doing exactly. when he spoke right. to Pastor Phil and yeah. said they're not ready. So, yeah. 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 I learned how to do budgets from Wayne because he <laughs> yeah. was my finance boss. Yeah. Helpful. <laughs> but we learned so much so from much. you guys from and you guys. Uh, serving in your season. I was for your dad yeah. when, when we first moved over. And um, I remember he said to me, don't have your heart set on anything. Yeah. Just mm. say yes to yeah. whatever comes mm. your way. That's and great. I think that's yeah. probably one of the 
greatest pieces of advice. Wow. So just, say, just say yes. That's brilliant. And you just don't know, you know, what those you know where opportunities lead. will bring, where it's going to lead. And um, and I know definitely looking back in hindsight as well, we weren't ready. Ethan, mm. I'm glad the seed died because if mm. we had have stepped out then and there, it probably would have destroyed us. That's mm. right. Mm. Absolutely. That's right. Because when people That's ask, true. you know, should we church plant or that it sounds so glamorous or whatever, it's not. It is And I really need to be ready. And yeah. it has to be agreed so on. Like, let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah. It's yeah. not glamorous. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and but more from a spiritual um, point of view. Mm. So do you guys have what was it like landing in your cities? Um, you guys, for instance, you're yeah. you're in Hong Kong, so mm. they don't right. speak English. Yeah. Spiritual climate's completely different mm. to Sydney. What was that like? I guess one word is daunting. Yeah. It was just daunting, mm -hmm. like where do we even start? Yeah. That, that was the biggest thing and I think it was just then okay it's just one step at a time one day at a time you can't you know foresee so far you just have to take it a little bit at a time and that's yeah. all mm. I, I feel we were kind of in denial <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we landed on the I being the the business manager here it's all about being organized and get your budgets in place and plan everything you're going to do and then when we landed in Hong Kong I, I just had this shock. What do we do? Where do we start? Yeah, mm. and, and and it was. It was. I think it was good for both of us. I kind of think ministry, when you're both in it, it saves you. And mm -hmm. uh, I think our marriage is in the best place. I think yeah. spiritually with the Lord, it, we're in the best place because we had no one that we could fall back on, mm. and we just didn't know what to do. Wow. And yeah. it was just flying by the city pants. Yeah. We just made it up one day at a time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So was there little yeah. moments where it was like God confirmations, where like something happened or a connection yeah. happened? It was oh, like, so oh my many. gosh. We had like many, 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 many. Of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we know we're meant to be in Hong Kong mm. and that region of the world will be there for the rest of our lives. Mm. But the Lord Beautiful. did these little things, mm. and just little things, and which confirmed, yeah, this is where we're meant to be. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I, I wouldn't say we've had. Uh, spectacular growth or spectacular this because we're kind of mm -hmm. working on the soil mm -hmm. of the ground it, it's just and working in the soil yeah. of people's hearts yeah. but we just love it yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. love it I think the thing I had to do was when we first moved to Hong Kong when we landed I said this is home now Yes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pine right. for Sydney, I couldn't pine for Australia anymore. This is Great. my, yeah. my right. home. Great. Because one of the first things that people, you know, when they came to our church, would ask us, oh, how long are you here for? Mm. Mm -hmm. Because they would hear that so often from expats yes. that would yeah. come to Hong Kong wow. yeah. and they'd stay for maybe five years or seven years or yeah. at the most ten years and then they'd move yeah. Um, yeah. back to their hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whenever I was, I always made it very clear whenever I was Instagramming or Facebooking, whenever we came back to Sydney, I never said back home. Right. It was always oh, wow. when I went back to Hong That's Kong, awesome. I'd say yeah. I'm home. Yeah. yeah. You know, wow. And it meant so much for, to our people because yeah. it gave them a sense of security. Right. Their pastors are not going to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's you remember awesome. having a, a coffee with a church planner in New York and he was, he'd been there for some years before us and he said, I was getting advice from him and he said, listen, you, you need to understand that you, you have to understand that you are called. Mm. And, and I'd heard that all my life growing up in church, but it was very apparent at that point, am I truly called to mm. this city? Mm. Right. And I think for any of our, yeah. in any city, it doesn't matter whether it's in the country, or the suburbs or the city, if you're going to church plant, you need to know, are you called? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he said yeah. the, ro the romantic side of both New York and church planting mm -hmm. is going to wear off in like minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And the, the city and the, the intensity of it mm -hmm. and the people and the opposition will hit you in the face, but right. in that moment, mm -hmm. will you know you're called and yeah. so that was like some of the best advice mm. was to really yeah. and, and you you could say yeah of course but he was like no just get rid of the feeling of it and actually dig deep into yeah. your heart yeah. right. and that obviously happens in in prayer uh, which was really yeah. I think key for us really yeah. was was prayer particularly because yeah. we didn't have a team and everything else it was like God was our yeah. team yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure it's similar to you guys yeah. but maybe let's talk about prayer yeah. from it. What did that look like when you hit the ground and and what did you learn about God and yourself mm -hmm. as a church planner mm -hmm. when it came to prayer? 